Let me show you in the following video how easy it is to do restoration with a unique and easy method. Hi folks, I'm the author of Got Mold, Now What? And today I'm going to share a little bit of information about just exactly how attic mold grows and what's important to correct and understand in order to permanently solve an attic mold problem. You see folks, attic mold grows virtually only during the winter months. What happens is when you're heating your home, hot air from the furnace rises up into the attic space. Now, in a properly vented home, this hot air is able to escape the attic through a, a series of what are called outtake air vents. Outtake air vents can take a couple of simple basic forms. The first are old-fashioned gable end vents, which is some sort of a louvered opening on the gable end of the home. Now the gable end is the triangle side it's not the long length. Bear with me, my drawings are chicken scratch at best. But So this is the gable end, and there may be a vent on this end and another one we can't see on the further end of the home. Like this, that is louvered, and will allow air to come in and then escape outwards. So, gable end vents are one of the oldest versions of outtake air ventilation. These vents were employed from the early 1900s all the way through the 1970s. In the 1970s, the second form of outtake air vents came into being, and those vents are called box vents. So we have first gable end, the second are box vents. Box vents are often called hat vents, and they take the version of little pop-up, mushroom-style, metallic holes that are cut into the roof that have a little pop-up vent cover to prevent rain from getting in. And the, the concept is the same. Hot air that rises comes in, and then it escapes out of the house through the box vents. And so this air is able to escape from the house. The latest style of outtake air vent is called a ridge vent. And the concept behind a ridge vent is fairly simple. The ridge is this part of the roof here. And a ridge vent goes along the entire length of the long portion of the roof called the ridge. And since it's the highest point, it's the most efficient place to allow outtake air to escape. Now, in a northern climate, sometimes a ridge vent can become buried under snow. That's a more complicated part. We'll get to it in a little bit. Now, folks, in order for all of these gable end, box vents, and ridge vents to function, you need to have another very important form of ventilation, and that is called intake air. And intake air ventilation comes in along the overhang underneath the house. This portion of the home from here to here is called a soffit. So intake air vents are almost always in the form of a soffit vent that allows air to come into the attic from underneath and then to move through the attic and exchange the mass of air out through a gable end vent, through a box vent, or in the modern attic, through a ridge vent. Now, what causes problems? One of the problems can be a lack of soffit ventilation, or you may not have enough soffit vents going down the length of the attic. So you need to make sure you have adequate soffit vents for the amount of square footage of outtake air vents in order for this hot air that's escaping during the winter months 
to exchange out. What happens when this doesn't occur? When we don't have enough ventilation, when we don't have a ridge vent, we don't have a box vent, we don't have enough soffit vents, what happens is this hot air mass meets the cold boards of the attic and in the winter, this, the roof may be covered with snow. So the hot air mass is going to meet those cold boards and it creates dew point in the form of water. And these drips of water will come from especially around the nails. See, the nails that penetrate through your roof are actual conductors of hot and cold. And in a cold, frozen attic, they will get frosty. And then when the hot air mass meets that frost, it starts to melt, creating dew point, and that dew point is the water source that creates the mold. Now, folks, there's mold. There are mold spores in literally every single breath we've ever taken, and in fact, I am breathing mold spores right now in my office as I share this video with you. So, one of the major problems that occurs when we don't have is when we don't have soffit vents to allow the air to move through to one of the outtake air vents like a gable end vent, the box vents, or the ridge vent. <clears throat> Another thing that happens is when in a modern house, in a house that was originally designed with gable end vents for outtake air, what happens is roofers will often come and they will install the latest vent, a ridge vent, from one end of the roof to the other. When you do that, it's essential that you seal off the old gable end vents on both ends of the house. And that will allow this air to draft from the soffit intake vents all the way through and exchange out the top of the roof through the ridge vent. When you don't seal off the gable end vents and you install a modern ridge vent, what happens is the air comes in the largest opening, which is not the soffit vents, it's the gable end. So the air will draft from in the gable end vent and then go out the soffit. I like to call this short-circuited ventilation. And short-circuited ventilation creates condensation every single time. It's one of the most common issues, and it's one of the least understood by modern mold remediators and roofers alike. So make sure if your roofer adds a ridge vent, if you originally have gable end vents, that those get sealed off in order to exchange the air mass. Another problem that we see frequently is ba our baffles. And baffles are pieces of cardboard or styrofoam. So these baffles, these pieces of cardboard or pink styrofoam insulation are there to keep these soffit vents from becoming blocked with the loose insulation that exists inside the attic space. Now the problem with the baffles is they don't come with instructions that tell you to cut them off even with the level of the insulation on the inside. So consequently, what happens is they're installed at the same length they're manufactured, which is usually three or four feet long. And what that means is that the top of the baffle is already three or four feet up into the attic space. And that uh, three to four foot height is the height where the air from the soffit enters the attic itself. And so it leaves this gigantic lower three to four feet of the attic full of hot air and it will only exchange the air up through the ridge vent or out through the gable end vents or out through the box vents from this three to four foot height and that means it leaves this gigantic hot air mass in the bottom of the attic so baffles themselves can become a, a ventilation issue that helps to contribute to a mold problem.
So these are just some of the basic ventilation issues. If you fill out our form for a free estimate or you call me directly, we'll be glad to answer any of your other ventilation questions or to send one of our amazing teams out to serve your problem and treat it like we have for other customers in 47 states. We look forward to helping you solve your attic mold problem permanently. Thanks for watching. I hope you can now see the value of our new product. Please click the link below for more information.